In the animal kingdom, every day is a great big game of survival hide-and-seek. But some creatures take hiding to a whole new level by becoming Mother Nature's sneakiest masters of disguise. From shade-shifting squid to concealed creepy crawlies, keep your peepers open as we go on the hunt for some of the animal world's greatest masters of camouflage and invisibility. Sepio tooth is squid. While it might seem unbelievable, it's estimated that over 80% of the world's oceans remain unexplored and unseen. But even in the parts we do know about, there are plenty of crazy creatures that still evade the eyes of scientists, even up close. Check it out. This is a Sepio toothus squid a genus of pencil squid that has a very special superpower, the power to turn itself invisible. Squid are part of a group of mollusks called cephalopods, and like many cephalopods, they get their camouflaging abilities from special cells hidden within their skin called chromatophores. Each chromatophore is surrounded by muscles that stretch and contract the cell to control the spread of the inky pigment within. When the sacs inflate, the ink inside them spreads out along the cephalopod's skin and can make the creature appear a completely different color or even transparent. Another cephalopod with this color-shifting ability is the glass squid, who, much like the sepio squid, can transform from transparent to inked up in a matter of seconds. Despite their camo capabilities, it might surprise you to know that most cephalopods are actually colorblind themselves, seeing the world in black and white. So how can they adapt their color to their surroundings? Well, here is where it gets crazy. Many scientists believe that the color mimicry process is thanks to the squid's skin containing the same sort of light-sensitive proteins as the human eye, meaning that the skin itself can sense the color composition of its surroundings and change color accordingly. Pretty crazy, right? So while Violet Parr might be the invisible part of Pixar's incredible family, these squid games show who the real incredibles of our world truly are. Satanic Leaf-Tailed Gecko They say that you're better off with the devil you know than the devil you don't. But unfortunately for the prey of this next invisible assassin, there's no way they'll have a clue what's hit them until it's too late. Spotted anything yet? This is the ominously named Satanic Leaf-Tailed Gecko, a native of the island of Madagascar that has an ingenious way of blending in to its forest habitat. With an unbelievable appearance, this species of gecko has the special ability to masquerade as a leaf to hide from prey and predators alike. The Satanic Leaf-Tailed Gecko is nocturnal and does most of its hunting in the dead of night, guising as nothing more than an unsuspecting piece of plant life before pouncing to feast on unsuspecting insects. As day rolls around, the gecko transitions from the hunter to the hunted, at which point their unbelievable camouflage obscures them from any potential daytime predators, including the fossa, a cat-like creature that prowls the Madagascan forests. The gecko's evolved ability to remain undetected is exactly what's allowed it to survive so successfully to date. Thanks to gradual mutations over generations and generations, those members of the species born with more leaf-like traits were given more chance of surviving long enough to reproduce and pass those traits on to their young. This amazing process of natural selection explains how many of these bizarre camouflage abilities emerge in nature, as crazy as they may seem. Aside from the satanic leaf-tailed variety, there are many other species of leaf-tailed gecko all over the world. Many leaf-tailed geckos have flaps on the sides of their bodies and jaws, which flatten against camouflaging surfaces, making the gecko's outline almost indistinguishable. Satanic or otherwise, the leaf-tailed gecko certainly proves that when it comes to disguise, the devil is in the detail. Spider-tailed horn viper. If you thought that camouflage is all about not being seen, this next creature goes to show that distraction can play just as big a role as being straight up invisible. <laughs> if you're still not sure what you saw there, 
Let's go again. Well, you might be thinking that this spider and this snake are quite the hunting double act. Think again, because this dynamic duo are one and the same. Yeah, I don't know about you, but this one kind of blew my mind and made my skin crawl. This is the spider-tailed horned viper, a venomous snake endemic to Western Iran. Not only has this creature physically evolved towards deception, it's also adapted its instinctual behavior for the purpose. At the end of the spider-tailed horned viper's tail, there's a spiny little appendage that closely resembles one of the animal kingdom's eight-legged crawlers. While the snake's mottled coloring helps it blend in with rocks and sand, it dangles and wiggles its tail with the intent of luring in birds that prey on spiders. When the victim takes the bait, the snake launches a counterattack, rapidly striking, clamping down, injecting venom, and gobbling up the aftermath. Nicknamed the Spider Snake, this slippery fellow is two of the world's biggest fears brought together. But which is worse, spiders, snakes, or this nightmare-fueling hybrid of the two? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Pygmy Seahorse They say that good things come in small packages, and for our next camo creature, that package contains a whole lot of adaptable power. About the size of a paperclip, the average pygmy seahorse measures from an inch to as small as just half an inch from snout to tail. But despite its paperclip presence, size is not this peculiar creature's defining trait. These diminutive drifters spend their entire lives blending in around coral that looks exactly like them. But the question is, what came first, the pygmy or the coral? Well, as far as overall shape and texture is concerned, it's likely the coral came first, but coloration is a much more intriguing story. At birth, pygmy seahorses are similar in color to algae, but once they reach adulthood, they slowly transition to match their surroundings, specifically the coral they call home. At first, scientists weren't sure if the seahorses sought out coral that matched their body color or if the pygmy's color changed depending on what color coral they were living amongst. In 2014, a group of marine biologists from the California Academy of Science collected a mating pair of orange pygmies from the Philippines with a very specific experiment in mind. Back at the lab, the scientists waited for the seahorse couple to get busy, and once the babies were born, the scientists took them away from the orange embrace of their parents' habitat to see what would happen. The pygmy babies were placed in a separate tank containing only purple coral instead of the orange where they were born. To the scientists' wonder, the offspring of the orange seahorses slowly turned purple to match their new purple coral home, adapting their invisible horsepower to their new surroundings. It's thought that the pygmy's color-changing process happens in a similar way as it does for cephalopods with the help of chromatophores, albeit at a more gradual pace. Small but mighty hidden, these teeny pygmies are certainly impressive. But does anyone else think they kind of look like candy? Must resist urge to nibble. Buff tip moth. Riddle me this. If a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? <laughs> An age old question I won't answer today. But how about this? If a buff tip moth is chilling on a tree and everyone in the world is around to see it, would it be seen? The answer is almost certainly no. While a lot of camouflage creatures rely on color and patterns as means to conceal themselves, few can match the accuracy with which the buff tip mimics its woodland habitat. Found in the woodlands of the UK, Europe, and Asia, the buff tip moth is not only the color of a loose twig, but it's shaped like one too. Like many moth species, the buff tip is a nocturnal flyer, a practice they've evolved to avoid their most threatening daytime predators, birds. While birds like the owl and nighthawks are famed for coming out at night, the majority of wild birds are diurnal, meaning they are most active during the day and typically rest at night. So during those risky daylight hours, the buff tip will hold its textured wings against its body, giving it the conical and deceptive twig-like appearance that it's known for. And it gets super weird when a pair of them try to mate, as you can see here. Oh, wait, no. 
that's just an actual pair of twigs. <laughs> Come on, can you blame me? Goldenrod Spider When you think of camouflage, bright, eye-catching colors aren't usually on the menu. But in the case of our next camo creepy crawly, the brighter, the better. This is the Goldenrod Spider a spider that exclusively hunts on the most vibrant of hunting grounds, on flower heads. Unlike most other spiders, the goldenrod doesn't rely on spinning webs to catch their prey, but instead camouflage. A type of crab spider, the goldenrod spider spends its time hanging out on goldenrod flowers in meadows across the globe. But what makes them stand out the most are their unique hunting tactics. These spiders fool their prey mostly bees, butterflies, and many other small insects that dare to stray onto the petals by blending into the flower and striking before they know what hit them. And it's not just limited to one color of flower. The goldenrod can actually change its color from white to yellow to match the color of the specific flower it's sitting on. These amazing color changing abilities, however, are not a straightforward process. There are two main cell layers playing a role in the goldenrod's color changing abilities. The upper layer is naturally clear, showing off the spider's naturally white-colored insides. But when one chooses to nest on a yellow flower, the spider will begin secreting a yellow pigment into its outer layer. The process of the spider changing from yellow to white takes around a week, while the change from white to yellow can take up to 25 days, as it takes longer to produce the yellow pigment. Most fascinating of all, though, is a behavior that can seem counterintuitive at first glance. Sometimes the goldenrod spider can be seen hunting on the pink petals of the pasture rose, where it boldly stands out to human eyes. But to the eyes of certain insectoid prey and predators of the spider, they're invisible. This is because the eyes of their insect adversaries lack the receptors needed to see red, so the goldenrod appears the same color as the pink petals. So in those cases, the goldenrod's biggest advantage is the shortcomings of its enemies. And while a win by default isn't the most honorable victory, I'd say being able to remain alive is probably satisfying enough for these little arachnids. Leave me alone. In the animal kingdom, being soft and squidgy makes you a very easy meal for predators. But thankfully for this next invisible insect, evolution has found a nifty way to keep it safe from the hungry beasts out there. On first glance, you might think this is just a regular leaf but a closer look reveals this is the common barren caterpillar. But unlike its name, there's nothing so common about this little green guy's skills for slipping under the radar. In their quest to become butterflies, caterpillars have two main goals, to eat and to avoid being eaten. For the barren caterpillar aiming to reach the sweet life of a butterfly, mango leaves are the highlight of the menu. And they spend all their time crawling on and crunching the leaves of mango plants native to Southeast Asia. To make sure they have enough nourishment for its transformative pupil stage, caterpillars can consume as much as 27,000 times their body weight in food in just a matter of weeks. To mask themselves from predators while they binge and sleep off the inevitable food comas, the barren caterpillar develops this lime-colored line across its spine as it grows that perfectly matches the midrib of its mango leaf lounger. Not only that, but the barren also sprouts these pine needle-like appendages that perfectly matches the flesh and veins of the leaf and allows it to bend any which way to match the curvature of the leaf bed. Even when not resting on its homey mango leaf, this very hungry caterpillar could easily be mistaken for plant matter, truly looking nothing like a regular meal for any potential predators nearby. But the barren caterpillar isn't the only leafy green in town. In the verdant forests of South Asia and Australia, there are leaves everywhere. But if you look closely, you'll realize that not everything is as it seems. Take a look. This is the aptly named giant leaf insect, and it's easy to see why. Its body and legs look exactly like real leaves, meaning it can seamlessly blend in with the foliage of the forest. Their coloring ranges from all shades of green to brown and orange, mimicking leaves at different stages of growth and decay. And it's not only surface appearances that are being deceptive here. 
These amazing mimics also sway side to side to mirror the movement of a leaf blowing in the wind. With moves fresher than a summer breeze, this leaf lord is dancing his way into continued survival. On to a similar specimen now, and if true beauty is within, then that expression was never more literal than in this case of our next invisible insect. Check this out. This is the dead leaf butterfly, aptly named for its ability to, well, masquerade as a dead leaf. At least when its wings are closed, that is. Also known as the orange oak leaf butterfly, this leaf in the wind certainly looks the part, mimicking a fallen leaves color and texture with insane detail, from mid-rib to stem. But that's not all. Native to tropical Asian forest lands from India to Japan, not only can the dead leaf butterfly transform from mottled brown to brilliant iridescence, it can also change with the seasons. In the cooler, rainy months, the butterfly can darken to mirror a wet leaf, but appears drier and richer in color during the warmer times of the year. Even the butterfly's inner wings can adapt to suit its camouflaging needs with the changing seasons, as seen here. In the wet season, the dead leaf butterfly's wings display blue tones with a thick yellow band, whereas the dry season version sports more muted violet tones. The ability to change color in this way is down to a natural phenomenon known as seasonal pigmentation polyphenism, a biological mechanism in the genetic makeup of certain species of insect. This astounding inbuilt evolved mechanism allows insects like the dead leaf butterfly to change their appearance automatically to provide appropriate camouflage in line with the changing seasons. I do the same thing, except much simpler. I stay hidden all year round by simply never going outside. While the dead leaf butterfly can turn over a new leaf, you can too by tapping that like button and subscribing to the BMA's channel for more brain boosting facts almost every day. All done? All right, let's blend right back into the video. Low Lurking Threats for most sneaky peats in the animal kingdom, the power of invisibility is mainly used to evade the eyes of dangerous predators. But for some, the capability for camouflage is predominantly a chance to play hide and seek with their prey. Take a look at this. If you think this area is just a humble oceanic rock or a detached hunk of coral, check this out. The strange thing in that video and camouflaged in the image you saw beforehand is the stonefish. Unlike most other fish, the stonefish has no scales, but is instead covered with highly textured brown or gray skin, which sometimes includes patches of color to conceal itself in coral reefs. Cosplaying as an encrusted rock or a lump of coral, the bottom-dwelling stonefish will hide within reefs in the Indian and Pacific Oceans, waiting for the opportunity to strike. And the stonefish doesn't stop at camouflaging itself as a rock or a lump of coral. Oh no, it can also bury itself beneath the sand and pebbles to await any unsuspecting victim swimming overhead. But stonefish are not only masters in the art of disguise on the offense, but on the defense too. Officially dubbed the most venomous fish in the world, stonefish also pose a threat to paddling beachgoers who mistake them for a rock. Armed with 13 dorsal spines that raise up when old stony face feels threatened, the stonefish can inject a large amount of venom into anything unlucky enough to step on it. A sting from one of these guys' hypodermic needle-like appendages can be astoundingly painful, and in some cases, even for fully grown humans, fatal. Another bottom-dwelling disguiser is the nightmarish monkfish, who also lays in wait on the ocean floor for unsuspecting prey to get close enough. While these lurking monsters of disguise aren't venomous, their large jaws come with multiple rows of razor-sharp teeth, making them another hideaway menace to keep your eyes extra peeled for next time you take a relaxing dip in the deep blue. Glass Animals 
If we've learned anything so far, it's that camouflage is all about blending into your surroundings. But what about if your surroundings happen to consist of, well, nothing at all? In the open ocean, you might think that there's no place to hide, but there are some aquatic creatures out there that have come up with a solution. This is the Cystosoma, an alien-looking crustacean with some pretty special superpowers. This crafty crustacean is a part of a genetic group of hyperid amphipods who can often be found in the mesopelagic zone of the ocean, also known as the Twilight Zone. Very little sunlight reaches these depths and creatures like the Cystosoma have developed their transparent bodies to cast less visible silhouettes when spotted from below in the dim light. However, just like glass, transparent sea creatures are often very reflective if they do come into contact with light, such as glares from the bioluminescent searchlights of predators, which is, understandably, not ideal. So, taking their talent for invisibility one step further, Cystosoma are cloaked with anti-reflective hair-like structures that serve to dampen reflections by scattering and absorbing light, somewhat like anti-glare coating on glass. As a result, they're so effective at being invisible that researchers who've caught specimens have been quoted as saying, when you pull up a trawl bucket packed full of plankton, you see an empty spot. Why is nothing there? You reach in and pull out a Cystosoma. So while Harry Potter needed a physical cloak to achieve invisibility, the Cystosoma's invisible powers are hardwired into its anatomy. But it's not the only one. Another surprising aquatic master of the invisible arts is the eel. Many species of freshwater eel, including the European, conger, and moray eel, go through a larval stage early in their life cycle where they're known as leptocephaly, characterized by small, narrow bodies that are completely transparent. Despite spending their entire adult lives in freshwater rivers, streams, and estuaries, many species of eel will return to the open ocean to spawn eggs which hatch into larvae. Beginning life at just 0.2 inches long, Eel larvae drift around the sea for between seven months and three years before finding the fresh water their relatives call home, where they develop into their adult forms. But before they reach that stage, let's just say that in the Oceanic Hunger Games, the odds aren't exactly in the favor of these tiny, mostly defenseless jelly worms. So it's likely that they evolved their transparent bodies to help them evade the eyes of predators as they float through the open ocean, feeding on tiny organic particles known as marine snow. With seven different stages making up their life cycle, most eels undergo an intense transformation, from leptocephalus to a fully grown adult eel. In the penultimate part of the oceanic leg of their journey, the leptocephalus will regenerate into what's known as the glass eel stage. This is another hard to see iteration of life, but with a more streamlined body built for speedier swimming perfect for catching plankton for food and finding their way to fresh water, where they finally gain some pigmentation. At that point, it's goodbye to the glassiest camouflage I've ever seen, and hello to the gross, slimy brown and greenness, and later silvery blackness, of the adult eels we're all more familiar with. Then eventually, back to the sea to breed and die. Such is life. Oh, they grow up so fast. <laughs> Wraparound Spider Picture this, you're going on an adventure into the Australian bush. You pause for breath and lean against the nearest tree. Grasping one of its branches for support, suddenly you feel something furry beneath your fingers and turn to see this. <sighs> the little disguised demon here is called Telephonus conifera, aka the Wraparound Spider. Indigenous to Western Australia, the wraparound spider is aptly named for its ability to flatten and wrap its body around tree limbs as a means of camouflage from predators. While zoomed in photos make these eight-legged creeps look like Aragog brought to life, they're actually teeny tiny, especially compared to some spiders living down under. They grow no larger than 0.3 inches in length, so hiding in plain sight amongst their larger, more fierce relatives is necessary for survival. The spider's abdomen is shaped like an inverted disc, allowing it to completely flatten itself against its perch, and it's decorated with small circles, mimicking the imperfections along a tree's branch. During the day, the wraparound spider keeps a very low profile, 
hanging around incognito on branches, and comes out to play under the cover of darkness, spinning networks of webs to travel between trees. While their venom is harmless to humans, the shock of seeing what you thought was merely a regular tree branch suddenly up and scurry away, well, it's an image that's guaranteed to haunt our nightmares. Atlas Moth They say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but in our next case of mimicry, it's all about survival. Is that a pair of hissing snakes I see before me? Nope, it's the Atlas Moth. While not invisible to the naked eye, this majestic looking moth has the ability to obscure itself from predators with these marvelous reptilian wing patterns that make it look remarkably snake-like. Albeit a snake lacking a little in the length department, not only does the Atlas moth look the part, but it plays it too. Reportedly, if threatened by birds or other predators, it'll fall to the forest floor and writhe around flapping its wings, replicating the movement of a snake's head and neck. Given that this incredible creature is one of the largest insects on the planet, with a wingspan reaching up to 12 inches across, it would seem trying to hide out of sight seemingly went out the window. But seeing as the moth species has made it this far, clearly something is working for them. Despite this elaborate outfit, the Atlas moth themselves only live for about two weeks in their adult form. I guess if you're going to live a short and sweet life, you may as well live it vibrantly. Which of these animal masters of disguise impressed you the most? What would you use these camouflage skills for if you had some of your own? Let me know in the comments below and I'll reply to the best ideas. Thanks for watching.